Sup chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, anyone who has perused through my channel's comment section will know that I get a lot of questions. 99% of them are shedding questions, of course, but I have noticed that there are a lot of young hair loss witchers who watch my channel who are worried that finasteride will negatively impact their development. I already did a video addressing that particular concern, which I'll go ahead and link below, but the short answer is that taking finasteride will not have any negative impact on your development once you have finished going through puberty. For boys, puberty is complete by about the age of 14 up to 18 years old. So, if you are 18 years of age or older, there are absolutely no issues. If you're under 18, you're still probably fine to take finasteride, but just make sure you talk with your doctor first. But... Some of my young viewers are still afraid to start finasteride because they are afraid it will affect their bone structure and their bone growth, but it is not true in the slightest. In fact, even if you were to take finasteride before puberty is finished, it still wouldn't have any effect on bone growth, jaw development, or height. So, young hair loss witchers need not worry in the slightest. If you take finasteride, you will still grow up to look like Geralt of Rivia. So to best explain this, it's important to understand that the way the bones grow is not all along their visible structure. There is a special area at the end of the bone called the epiphyseal plate where all the growth happens. So, at the end of puberty, these growth plates will fuse together and the bones will then stop growing. If you look at the age that this occurs in boys, it occurs during puberty, and the latest it occurs in the long bones of the body is at the age of 19. However, some people in the comments section have pointed out that the facial bones may continue to grow for a few years after adolescence. Most of the research in this has been done by orthodontists, and it indicates that in some cases, jaw growth can continue up to about the age of 21 years old. So because of this, we now have DHT simps all over the internet who are trying to scare young people away from using finasteride so that they'll grow up to be just as bald, sexless, and miserable as they are. They do this by falsely claiming that DHT is necessary for bone growth, and not only that, they claim that DHT is necessary for bone health in general, as well as for proper bone mineral density. The DHT simps are saying that if you lower your DHT with a 5 air blocker like finasteride or dutasteride, you will end up stunting your growth and you will have weak, brittle bones for the rest of your life. So, are the DHT simps correct here? Does DHT play any role in bone development as it relates to height, facial structure, bone mineral density, or anything regarding bone health at all? Well, the short answer is of course no. Just like with everything else, DHT is completely fucking useless. But. I don't expect anyone to just take my word for it, of course, so let's go ahead and use a few Witcher potions, utilize our Witcher senses, and take a silver sword to slay this trash hormone yet again. So the first order of business is to track down where all this misinformation about bone health and 5 air blockers originates from. And it turns out, it comes from exactly whom I expected. You want to take a guess, hair loss Witchers? Yes, that's right. It was Dr. Trash who was the main antagonist in the Hair Cafe cinematic universe. He's kind of like Thanos, except he's trying to snap his finger to kill all of our hair follicles instead. So, just like in all of his other articles bashing finasteride, Dr. Trash gaslights finasteride by implying that 5 air blockers are bad for your bones. In his paragraph on bones, Dr. Trash cites two articles. The first is a study from Taiwan. The study was a database study that looked at people with a diagnosis of osteoporosis and matched them to people of similar age without osteoporosis. They then looked at the number of people who were taking 5-air inhibitors in both groups. The researchers found that more people in the osteoporosis group were taking finasteride than in the control group. However, they did not find any statistically significant difference in the two groups in the percentage of people taking dutasteride, which is a much stronger 5-air inhibitor than finasteride, as we all know. Of course, Dr. Trash doesn't mention this paradox, nor does he mention a similar study of subjects with benign prostatic hyperplasia that found no association between using 5-air blockers and hip fracture. In fact, in that study, there was even a trend for 5-air blockers to have a protective effect in preventing hip fractures. So once again, finasteride ends up doing the exact opposite thing of what the DHT simps claim it does. Dr. Trash also doesn't bother mentioning a study with a much better design, an actual randomized control trial based on the effects of 5 air inhibitors on bone mineral density. In the study, men were randomized to receive either finasteride or dutasteride or a placebo, and they were followed for a period of one year. Their bone density was assessed prior to the study, and then it was reassessed after six months and after a year of treatment. The study found no significant change in bone mineral density in the hip bones or the spine with either finasteride or dutasteride. So this is yet another 
another example of Dr. Trash cherry-picking data to push his radical anti-finasteride agenda. It's painfully obvious that the PFS Foundation is pulling Dr. Trash's strings. The only other study Dr. Trash quotes is a mouse study, because let's face it, you can use a mouse study to prove anything these days. This particular mouse study quoted by Dr. Trash used genetically modified mice that had their type 1 5-air isoenzyme completely eliminated. The study found that male mice that completely lacked the type 1 5-air isoenzyme had reduced bone density, though interestingly enough, that didn't happen in female mice. So, this is a completely artificial situation. These mice were born and grew up with a complete lack of the type 1 5-air isoenzyme, which is not the same as an adult human taking finasteride or dutasteride after puberty. Even dutasteride Asteroid, which is a very strong 5 air blocker, doesn't completely block this type 1 5 air isoenzyme in humans unless you take ridiculously high doses of it. I'm talking like 10 milligrams per day. So once again, Dr. Trash is just trying to make finasteride look bad, and he's doing this by cherry-picking data that doesn't even apply to humans who are taking 5 air inhibitors. Also, it is contradicted by lots of other higher quality data. If we want to focus on mechanistic data for the moment, it is clear from recent studies that it is testosterone and estrogen that are important for bone health, and not DHT. In fact, DHT is completely useless for bone health, as well as everything else, of course. That's why this video is just one of many, and my DHT is a trash hormone video series, and I'll go ahead and link the entire playlist below. But getting to the study, the study found that when castrated rats were given testosterone, their bone mineral density increased. They then added a 5 air blocker called MK434 to the testosterone. MK434 is a strong blocker of both the type 1 and the type 2 5 air isoenzymes in rodents. The investigators found that the combination of MK434 plus testosterone increased bone mineral density as much as testosterone alone. That means that it is testosterone that increases bone mineral density, not DHT. DHT he plays no role in increasing bone mineral density whatsoever. Also, before you guys ask, MK434 is not commercially available, and it was never approved for human use, and that's probably because it was found to be less effective in humans than it is in rodents. So the same investigators of the study then went ahead and did a similar randomized controlled trial in hypogonadal men. They randomized the men to receive testosterone with or without finasteride at a dose of 5 milligrams per day. The study showed that finasteride did not block the bone mineral density improvement caused by testosterone. So the evidence shows that it is testosterone and not DHT that causes bone growth in men. So the DHT simps who tell you that finasteride will impair your development are completely lying to you. But besides testosterone, there there is another hormone that is very important for bone growth in boys during puberty, and that hormone is estrogen. Estrogen is naturally produced in men due to the aromatization of testosterone into estrogen, though of course the levels of estrogen in men are a lot lower than they are in women, unless of course you're Jason Blaha. However, there is now mounting evidence that the increase in estrogen that occurs in puberty not only causes bone growth, but it is also responsible for the epiphyseal closure that stops bone growth. Further evidence for that is that in men born with a defect in their estrogen receptors, their growth continues past adolescence and they don't get fusion of their epiphyseal plates. However, you might be asking now, couldn't finasteride possibly increase estrogen levels? Because when the 5 air enzyme is blocked, there is more testosterone that is metabolized into estrogen by the aromatase enzyme. So therefore, could finasteride prematurely fuse the epiphyseal plates by raising estrogen levels? Now. It is true that 5 air blockers can cause slight changes in estrogen levels, but they are extremely minimal, especially when compared to the effects on testosterone, which increases at least 10-15% to with finasteride and up to 25% with dutasteride. Remember that testosterone increases bone growth, so that will easily offset any minor increase in estrogen from finasteride. And you don't have to take my word for it, even Dr. Trash agrees with me on this one. In his article on testosterone and 5 air blockers, he states that there is no measurable effect on estrogen levels from from these drugs. And we have even better evidence that lowering DHT does not cause decreased height or affect bone development in any way whatsoever. So the final piece of evidence that DHT has nothing at all to do with bone growth or epiphyseal plate fusion comes from people who are born with a mutation in their 5 air type 2 genes so that they lack the type 2 5 air isoenzyme. Followers of my channel know that this mutation was first described by one of the protagonists of the Hair Cafe Cinematic Universe. I'm talking about Dr. Julianne Imperato McGinley, who is the mother of finasteride. There are no reports of growth problems in men with this deficiency. Their bone mineral density has been studied, and it is completely normal. It appears that DHT doesn't even play a role in children's bone growth, in fact. In this study of Chinese children with a type 2 5 air de deficiency, heights were all normal when compared to the heights of children without any 5 air deficiency. 
So as this review article concluded, despite the data on the type 1 5-error isoenzyme in mice being important for bone growth, quote, it seems that neither the type 1 nor type 2 5-alpha reductase isoenzyme is required for bone maintenance in adult men, unquote. So to summarize, the research shows that testosterone and estrogen are important for bone growth in men and that DHT is not involved in bone growth at all. So there is no reason to worry that taking finasteride or dutasteride will stunt your growth or will result in weak bone bones, a weak jawline, or impaired bone health in any way whatsoever. There's absolutely no evidence it will do any of that. All this research proves is that DHT is once again a trash hormone that shortens our life and leaves us physically deformed. So don't fall for the grift of the DHT simps from the online manosphere or any biohacking communities who say that DHT is important. Suppressing your DHT should be your first priority and the priority of anyone who wants to live life to the fullest for as long as they possibly can. All right, I think that's it for now, hair loss witchers, but I'll be back with some more preem hair loss content soon. So thank you so much for watching. God bless.